So I'm Richard Strang. I'm the QA manager at Element. We're a fleet management company, and that means that when you see cars and trucks driving around that have some logo on the side, somebody is managing those vehicles as part of a fleet. And so that's what my company does. We provide services like that. But you pretty much have to have like at least 100 vehicles before we even care. So if you're smaller than that, uh, you have to do it on your own. Um, I've only been at this company since uh, January of this year. And I had been in the company for about a month when I got a call for papers from the Total Quality Conference. And my job then, my title was QA Guild Leader, and I was hired specifically to implement a QA Guild into this company. And being a month in, I'm like, okay, this is in September. By September, I should have this figured out. So I submitted a paper, and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna present and see what happened. And in the next, in the next future six months, we'll talk about what happened. So this is what you're gonna hear today: is what has happened in the last six months, and we'll see if I was successful in implementing a QA Guild. So I broke it into basically three parts, the start, the middle, the end, and, uh, and then I have some key takeaways at the end that I want to share with you. So it started back in the interview before Christmas last year. On the phone, I was told uh, that this company, Element, was betting their business on Agile and that they were going to do pure Agile. And I'm like, wow, I've never actually seen a company do pure Agile. Much more common is Agile-like or agile aspirations and things like that. So uh, I'm like, I am in. If you guys are gonna do it, I will come and do it with you. And so they hired me. And they said, We're, you're gonna be our QA guild leader and you're gonna be make sure that we do quality throughout the whole company. And I'm like, great, I am there. So I, um, before I started, I started to do some research. I'm like, what is a QA guild? What do they do? I found the Spotify cultural videos in part one of the Spotify cultural, what's it called? Um, Spotify engineering culture, here is what they say. A guild is a lightweight community of interest where people across the whole company gather and share knowledge within a specific area. Anyone can join or leave a guild at any time. Most organizational charts are an illusion, so our main focus is on community rather than on hierarchical structures. That's my attempt at a Scandinavian accent. <laughs> so, uh, and they also went on to mention, um, oh, I have a slide. This is a picture from the video. So the vertical bars are the squads, which are not labeled. And then the big boxes are the tribes, which are groups of squads that work on similar features. And then the red, uh, no, the green ones, the green ones are chapters. So in this case, a chapter would be everybody in it that is a business analyst would belong to the business analyst chapter and they would have a manager responsible for them. And then the purplish lines are the guilds. And this is where people with a common interest, uh, a community of interest, they called it. So I'm like, okay, this is what a guild is according to the Spotify videos. I also reread the book Agile Testing by um, Janet Gregory and forgot her first name, Crispin. Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa Crispin. Yes, there. I'm so embarrassed. And uh, guilds are not mentioned in Agile Testing. But the next book, More Agile Testing, guilds are mentioned on page 14. And they talk about the same thing that uh, a community model is the, is the way to go. So I'm like, okay, now I got some information. I also, of course, Googled it to find out what was going on in the, you know, just in the world but found surprisingly little about guilds online. Nobody was writing about, here's what my guild did this week. And I'm like, huh, I think you're gonna have to make this up as I go along, we will see. And then just as an aside, since I've been at Element, I have interviewed over 50 people for, for software testing positions, and I, getting ready for this talk, I asked them, because they all have agile experience, have you had any experience with agile guilds or chapters? Two people out of about 50 said they had, that, oh yeah, I think we had a guild, or oh, I think we had a chapter, but it was not very helpful. And I'm like, so it's just not a lot of things to draw on, so I'm gonna have to make it up. I will say that when I joined Element in 2019, my two sons, who are just out of university, thought it was really cool that my title was guild leader. <laughs> and I'm not sure why that's funny, but 
Maybe that's because I'm too old. But they apparently, they, they like that. So now, I have joined Element. I'm in there my first week. And I learned that Full Agile, even though it's been like two months since my interview, is still an aspirational goal, not an actual occurrence. If I had just taken my interview at face value, I would have believed that they were already doing Full Agile. But that was not the case. They were talking as if it had already happened, but it had not happened. And today, it still has not happened. Full Agile is not a thing at Element yet. So we're continuing to work on it. Um, Element, I learned, had two kinds of testers. They had project-based testers. They would work on a project similar to the squads shown here. In fact, they called them squads. And they also had steady-state testers, which were not part of the QA Guild. And this was like, oh, so I don't get to talk to them? They're like, nope, you just talk to the project testers. I'm like, okay, all right, well then, we'll talk to the project testers. Uh, there was about 20 project testers and 10 steady state testers. And within my first week, I was told that my job as QA Guild was 50% of my time as QA Guild leader, and the other 50% of my time, I would actually be in one of these squads. And actually, that was, that was really helpful. So by the end of my first week, I was a tester on the flagship project product for Element, and I was embedded in the squad, and I was doing the work every day, uh, writing test cases, uh, reviewing user scenarios, creating um, reviewing user stories, creating user scenarios, turning them into test cases, uh, working on some test automation. It was a great introduction to how Element thought they were going to do Agile. And the flagship product was actually, the Scrum Master was really good, top notch. It was a great place to learn. I also had to figure out the QA Guild thing. So I was the last guild leader to be named in Element. All the other guild leaders were already uh, Element employees. They were already there. I was hired in from the outside. I'm the, they had been waiting for me to start. Uh, we had a guild leaders meeting where we, everybody gave an update on how their guild was doing and I'm like just listening because of course I just got there. I don't know anything. Um, I started attending the guild meetings for the other guilds. So I went to the Scrum Masters meeting. I went to the developers meeting. It turns out they had combined developers, DevOps, and architecture all into a single guild. And I saw no consistency in how they were doing things. And that I will choose to believe that that's because they adjusted it for their particular needs. But it didn't help me as I'm trying to figure out what my needs are and how, how am I going to do. The first guild meeting I actually held myself wasn't with my guild members. My, my boss said, we want to introduce you to all the product owners and all the scrum masters and you're going to tell them about what the QA guild does. And I'm like, great, let's do that. And uh, I invited all the QA leads from the squads because I figured they, they should probably hear this too. And um, so here's what I told them. I told them that a QA guild would support the improvement of quality and the standardization of tools. We would share best practices amongst ourselves and learn from each other's experiences. They thought, my audience, that that was a great thing to do. And I'm like, okay, good, because I just made that up. <laughs> that was, that, I will do that. That, was, that is what we will do then, if you like that. And since the other Q, uh, guild, the QA leads had been there, we were able to you know, start off our guild meeting, which was just like the next day, uh, on the right foot, they had been there. So that was how we started uh, the QA guild at Element. Um, we created, a, I had to figure out who all the testers were. There was, uh, we had to create a mailing list, add all the project testers to it. It actually took several weeks to get all of that information because that everything was quite decentralized. There were the squads, but who were the people on the squads? We weren't sure what their role was. Are you a tester? Are you a tester? Who's the testers? So we talked to them and we figured it out and finally we, we, we got it going. Uh, so we, we started the first guild meetings and, and we talked about a few things. So our early meetings, uh, we talked about housekeeping issues, just you know what's going on that might be of interest. We have data refreshes in our test environments. It's important to know when those are going to happen. We had tooling issues. We used Jira with the Zephyr add-on for test management and uh, nobody could figure out how to do uploads from Excel into Zephyr. And we figured it out and then we did a demo in the guild meeting and we recorded it and we were still referring to it. And everybody thought that was good. We also used Selenium and JMeter for performance testing and 
every project wanted to do performance testing, they thought. And so we had some conversations about, well, what does performance testing look like on your project? What does it look like on your project? You're an internal application. Are you sure, are you, sure you want to do performance testing when it's just the internal stuff? Maybe it's the external facing applications we should be more worried about. These were great conversations that we started to have. So that, that's kind of the early times. In May, we had a reorg. And my boss changed, got a new boss, got a new title. I was no longer QA guild leader. I was now QA manager. And I'm like, oh, that was cool. That was a good title. But the best thing was now the steady state testers reported to me. So now I had all the testers in the whole company. Uh, at this point, we were about 40 people because we were adding some more projects. So I invited all the steady state testers to come to our meeting. Um, and, bittersweet, I was no longer required to spend 50% of my time in a squad. So I had spent three sprints in that uh, uh, first squad with the flagship project, and then we had another uh, project that was not going very well, and I thought, I talked to my boss, my old boss, maybe I should move over to that project, and she thought, yeah, that's a good project, you move over to that project. So we moved over to that one, I was there for about five sprints. And uh, that project went to production and everybody's happy, but in the meantime that we had the reorg and now I don't get my hands dirty every day in a squad. I have to uh, I hear about things secondhand now rather than see it first. So pros and cons. Um, during our early guild meetings, I asked the guild members, anybody here been a member of a guild before? One person said, oh, I was a member of a guild in another place, and so we got together for half an hour to have a conversation about it. Still not really that helpful. He told me about what he did, but there was no like epiphany, no lightning bolt, nothing that said, this is what a guild is. And so we're still making it up as we go along. All right, so one thing that we did that was really good is uh, we have, in following the Spotify Agile model, they had everybody onshore co-located. At least that was the goal. Never quite got there, but with the reorg, we had a new CTO, and he's like, why is everybody onshore? Why aren't we doing more offshore stuff? So we, we switched our model uh, to a more offshore model, and I realized that I had been ignoring half of my guild because most of the steady state testers and a lot of the project testers that weren't part of an actual squad were offshore. In <coughs> also some in Uruguay and Mexico. So I started, I've been having meetings every week. I started alternating the meetings between North American time and Indian time. So every other week we have a meeting at seven o'clock in the morning. I invite the entire guild, the whole mailing list to the meetings, but they go to the ones that happen when they are awake and so they can see what happens. And oh my goodness, the offshore team, they all came and talked to us and we've been having some great conversations and then as we've been moving to more of the offshore model, now about three quarters of the team is offshore and about one quarter onshore. So these offshore meetings, they are well attended and I'm, I'm feeling like it's going really well. We also record every single meeting. We use Skype for business, we record it, and then we upload it to the QA Guild SharePoint site. I created an index to go with it so that you know we had people joining all the time and they could go through the index and see what was interesting in the previous meetings. We we're up to about 40 meetings. No, that can't be right must be about 30 meetings that we've had, and uh, including that very first meeting with the scrum leaders and the product owners. So anybody who's really gung-ho could go and listen to the whole archive and, and hear the whole history and the whole evolution. Um, turns out that the, this library that we created is one of the really great benefits of the guild, that this is not just the guild meeting recordings, but we've recorded some other stuff. So I mentioned the, the Zephyr upload uh, video where we, we taught you how to do that. We also have some in-house systems for setting up user accounts and, and things like that and setting roles. We recorded those and put those there and it turns out every project needs to be create test data with test users with certain roles and so that was really helpful. In uh, May, I went to Agile Testing Days in Chicago. I didn't speak there, I just went as an attendee and what I told my boss my old boss, who was the one who approved it, I said, I will go and attend, and I will bring it back, and I will teach the guild everything that I learned. And so that's what we did. Uh, in a lot of our guild meetings, we have uh, breakdowns of the sessions that I went to. And guess what? 
these sessions that I'm going to here, I'm going to bring them back to the guild and uh, talk about them uh, as well. And so most of them are contractors, so you know we're not going to pay for them to go because they own company should pay for them to go, is I guess what happens. But they will feel like they have been here at Total Quality 2019 because I'm going to give them the overview of what happened. All right. So, how did we do? Did we establish a guild according to the definition that I gave you earlier? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this is not a guild. It's a chapter. According to the Spotify definition, I have a really good QA chapter. I'm the QA manager, and I end up doing most of the talking even though I beg them to give me more information, like who wants to share something? Who's got something they want to present at the next meeting? It's mostly me. And I think it's because, well, I'm the QA manager, and so they have to listen to me. And I'm like, oh, that, I don't think that's what a guild is. It's not the community. It's more like a, a hierarchy. That's not what Spotify said to do. So I'm, I'm not sure that we did that. Also, my group might be too big. As of today, we're about 64 people total that have responsibility for testing. Now, this is an unusual spike. We're doing a transformation in the company, so we've spun up a whole bunch of projects. By the end of next year, they should all be back down, and maybe we'll be back around the 30, which was where we were at the beginning of the year. But I don't know. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> um, so it could be that it's just too unwieldy to be a, a real guild and get people uh, talking. Also. Should the QA manager be the guild leader? Is that, so I, that was my title originally and so I just kind of kept doing it. But and if it was a real community-led situation, it might be better if somebody else led that. Uh, we, the only people that we have attending are testers. And according to this diagram, you see the purple comes down here, there's somebody who cares about quality down here, but they're not a tester. We don't, we've invite, had guest speakers, but we haven't had anybody join our guild that is not a tester. So uh, that's why I'm thinking, you know what, I've really, I built a chapter. I haven't built a guild. So in that sense, I have not done what I set out to do, but I have learned a bunch of things, which I want to share with you in the last minute or so. So, one thing that was constant in what I talked about is just the change. We got transformation happening. We got a new CTO. I had a, a, a title and a, and a leadership change. We've had a new projects spun up. Luckily, I like change. I get bored if I do the same thing too often. So I really like this. But I have worked with a lot of people that struggled with this. And I think it's a personal thing that you have to do to embrace change. And, and here's, I think, maybe the key. Anticipate change. Whatever state you're in right now will not be the state you're in six months from now. If you think about that right, you know, if you sit down and think about it, you're like, well, what could it be in six months? What might it look like? And start to, you know, what if? You'll be much better prepared for when nothing you thought about happens, but your pathways in your brain have still been prepared for change. So that's one thing I want to uh, emphasize. One of the key things I learned at Agile Testing Days, uh, I went to a test management uh, workshop that was all day long. They had us do uh, an exercise where we put down everything we did in the last two weeks on little pieces of paper and put them up on the screen. And then they said, rank them in order of importance. And then they said, now rank them in terms of your boss's importance. <laughs> and it was so enlightening to see how different the rankings were from our, what we thought was important versus what our boss thinks was important. Now, I will uh, toot my own heart a little bit. I had done a bunch of budgeting work in the prior two weeks, so I put budgeting up on there. Nobody else thought that was important until we started thinking it like our bosses. And then everybody's like, oh yeah, my boss really cares about budgeting. This is another area that we need to learn to care about what our bosses care about uh, so that we can you know, do a good job. Um, so you ignore those at your own peril. And one that came up in an earlier presentation today was time tracking which I didn't put up here, but I'm like, oh yeah, my bosses really care about time tracking. So become a time tracking expert. And then one more thing that I learned, just to end off on. I've been in testing for 25 years, and somebody made me feel old yesterday when they told me they were 25 years old. 
<laughs> First time that's ever happened. Um, but I cannot believe how many times I've had a testing conversation and they're like, Richard, that was really good, what you just said. And I'm like, but this is just what I do. This is what we're doing. This is what testers do. So don't be afraid to repeat yourself. What we know as testers is not widely known amongst our peers, amongst our, the other people on our squads and in our projects. And so um, testing evangelist might be a thing. That actually was what they thought I was going to be called when, they, when I joined the, the guild leaders meeting. That's what they had blank space testing evangelist. And my name was going in the blank space. I'm like, I can be a testing evangelist, but is that really the title you want me to have? Anyways, um, so open your mouths, talk about testing. Uh, the more you talk about it, the better you get at talking about it. And uh, don't be afraid to, you know, when you see something weird, just go, huh, that's weird. And people go, oh, why is that weird? And then you can have a conversation. So let me see, did I cover everything? Oh, yeah. And then what I learned in this process is the guild is about community. It's not about the hierarchy. So now I'm going to go back to Element, and I'm going to think about how can I turn what I built from a chapter into a community that talks about testing. Thank you very much. And I guess if you had any questions, though, I, I have a fleet. Sign me up. <laughs>